Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm at my friend's workshop so I'm going to do some work on my van. This is Adrian's workshop, it's a former chicken pen. Now Adrian does plan on opening this up so that other people can use this and have access to this space. But a little bit more about this later on because the main purpose of me being here today is to change the diff oil on my van. After seeing the Explorers video of their transit van diff blowing up it's been playing on my mind because it's something i've been wanting to do for a long time to mary in the summer i was planning on changing the diff oil but i didn't have anywhere to do it anywhere with solid ground anyway but thanks to my friend adrian allowing me to work on mary outside his chicken pen this has got a solid concrete base which is perfect for jacking up my van allowing me to get underneath and change the diff oil but that's not the only reason i'm here today i'm also here today to do another job on mary but like i say whilst the diff oil is nice and warm i want to get that out of there and change it because i do really really need to get this job done it's been playing on my mind all summer now I've never changed a diff oil on my van before so I've gone on YouTube watched a few videos and I highly recommend anybody that's thinking about tackling a job like this to just go ahead and watch some videos on YouTube on how to do it it's an amazing resource and that's exactly what I've done I've watched a couple of videos on how to change the diff oil and it really is a simple task well it looks easy anyway Right, so let's get some overalls on before my diff does get cold because it is a rather chilly day today. Well, that didn't quite go to plan. You know when you feel a right plonker because you brought the wrong tools with you? Well, this is one of those days because my diff spanner doesn't fit my diff sump plug. So, uh, we'll knock that idea on the head for now. Whilst I'm here, I'm going to modify or attempt to modify the solar panel on my roof. I'm going to try and make a system where I can tilt it towards the sun. But once again, after watching several videos on YouTube on how to make your solar panels tilt on the roof of your van, thanks to those videos and a combination of ideas, I've come up with my own cunning plan. Well, it's not my own cunning plan, actually. I've bumped into a fellow van lifer, Reese. Um, hi, Reese, if you're watching this video. Thanks for giving me the great idea on how to tilt the solar panels on the roof of my van. And I'd like to share that idea with you. So keep watching, and I shall show you how I'm going to attempt to get my solar panel to tip either way, depending on which direction my van is facing, so I can make best use of the winter sun. After all, it is quite a difficult thing to do this time of year. And even though there's no sun out, my glasses have still gone to sunglass mode, which is a bit odd. So there must be some sun getting through these clouds. <laughs> we live in hope, right? Okay. Now, like I say, my friend Reese gave me this idea. So the idea is to get this angle iron, put it up on the roof, like this way up, and then the solar panel is going to fit along here I'm going to have a bolt at this end, a bolt at that end, and then I'll be able to tip the solar panels like this. That's the idea anyway. I've also got two of these box sections, and these are going to be the, what pivot and hold the solar panel up at an angle. That's the basic principle. Let's see if it works. <laughs> So here's the top of my van. As you can see, there's my huge 305 watt Renergy solar panel. It's quite a big solar panel, but because I've got this roof vent here, all this space is pretty well lost. And that's the reason I've gone for such a high profile piece of angled aluminium. I'm hoping that I can put this angle at the back of my van here, right back here like this and then another piece down there and because it's such a high profile piece of aluminium i'm hoping i'll be able to get that solar panel over the top of my roof vent with enough room allowing me to open the roof vent underneath the solar panel and this gives me two benefits one when it rains it's not going to be so noisy because this roof vent is right above my bed it will also free up a hell of a lot of room further down the roof of my van allowing me to fit a second solar panel hopefully now this piece of angled aluminium is 100 mil by 50 mil so hopefully that's going to be high enough and i will put a link in the description of this video to everything that i'm using to raise my solar panel and also to create 
the ability to tilt it either way just for your convenience in case you decide you want to do this to your van as well and because my panel is so heavy I'm gonna to have to do everything up here because there's no way I'm gonna take that solar panel bring it down there and do the work I'm gonna do all the work up here on my roof and the good news is it's supposed to be quite a clear day today although it's foggy they don't give any rain so I should be able to do this with no drama well I guess the first thing I'm going to need to do is dismantle the unistrut off the solar panel so I can measure it all up and make sure that it will actually fit the angled aluminium. Wish me luck. <laughs> first of all let's get rid of this manky old bit of duckboard. I built this for when I have an outside shower but since putting it on my roof it's gone really manky and nasty so let's go in. That didn't fare too well and look at the state of this i'm gonna to need to clean this <sighs> right. Right, let's put that over there let's get these off don't need these anymore Ooh, slippery that is dangerous that is Oh my god, that's so slippery. I'll tell you what, this moss is really slippery. Look at that, I almost, almost fell off the roof. And the last thing Becky said to me before I left was make sure you're careful up on that ladder. Don't worry my dear, I'll be very careful, I said. Yeah, that could have been pretty nasty. Right, let's concentrate on getting the job done. That's the panel disconnected. You can see it's, it's not that heavy, this panel. It is easy to lift this up. So all I have to do now is take these brackets off that I put in drill some holes in each end I need a hole in each corner and one in the middle for the riv nuts to go in so first of all I'm going to take these brackets off that I made I'm going to save these brackets because I might reuse these again when I fit another solar panel further down I'm only interested in making this solar panel tiltable when I get the second solar panel and fit it down this end of the roof, I'm just going to keep that one flat. I think, well, I'll say that. I'll probably change my mind later on. Let's take these right out, that'll be easier. So lazy. I didn't take all the bolts out. I can't get these out now. <laughs> I'm making a right big zero out of this. Right, to get the hole in the solar panel, I'll put this up there like that. I've offered the angle up to the solar panel drill through the angle, drill through the solar panel now I'm going to put the rivet nut in there and once the rivet nut's in I will attach the angle to the solar panel and then drill the other hole the other end using the same method so let's put that in now I made a little bit of a mistake I had this first hole too far this way and I'm only thinking about this I'm guessing that inside the frame there must be some kind of solid L piece in there to hold the whole frame together and by drilling through that the rivet nut can't expand so by moving the hole further away from the corner where the profile is double skinned and a lot thinner the rivet nut can now expand the other side of this profile if i show you this close up you can see what happens to the rivet nut when you do them up you see how it's expanded well because this is a solid piece it wouldn't expand um how can i explain it anyway it works better with the rivet nut further away from the corner so now what i've got to do is fix this to here and drill a hole the other side by fixing it here and then drilling the hole or marking the hole further along I know that um, it's going to work out a lot better <laughs> right let's sort this out now I need to mark the other side now <clears throat> right so let's put a bolt in there hold that in place and then we can work out where the next one's got to go like that 
that's just going to make sure that's not going to move and I can mark it the other side and work out where I'm going to drill the hole and also I need to drill a hole in the middle as well <sighs> I really didn't realise how much up and down you know I'd have to do Right, so now this piece of angle is attached to the sun, the sunroof, <laughs> the solar panel up that end. I've attached it so I know that when I drill through this hole into the solar panel, it's going to be in the right place. <laughs> Wish me luck. It's the wrong side of it. Oh, oh dear. Tell you what, up and down this ladder all day. That's better on the right side now. So this is a 9mm drill bit which I'm using to make clearance hole for the 8mm bolt that's going to go through. It's going to be perfectly in line. <laughs> he says. Yeah, now I've got a mark there. I can undo that end, get rid of this and drill the hole through. Jeez. And now I'm worried it's going to rain. That sky has gone from white cloud to black. And the annoying thing is, I can't drive my van anywhere until this is done now. So if it does start raining, I'm just going to have to concentrate on fixing this to the roof and then fix the tilting mechanism on another day. And I really hope it doesn't come like that. So frustrating the weather. So that's our 8mm clearance hole for the bolt. Now I need a 10mm drill so that our rivet nut can go into the solar panel. The drill's going flat. Rift nut. Can't get one. Now I don't need that. This is definitely taking longer than I anticipated. Isn't that always the case? <laughs> oh, these things are really hard to do that. If you're thinking about buying a rivet nut tool, don't buy one of these cheap ones. Get a proper one. Honestly, my hands are so cold they're cramping up. Jeez, oh, Louise. If it rains, it rains. I'll just have to pack everything away and sleep here the night. Sure, Adrian won't mind. So. Look at the scenery now. The fog has lifted, but there's a big black cloud over there. Which I'm not a fan of. Right. So that's the rivet nuts fitted. Now, theoretically, I'm just going to do this to demonstrate how it's going to work. It's a little bit high, but that's how I wanted it, to try and get the solar panel as high up as possible above my skylight. Yeah, that's going to work fine. I'm just going to check the other side lines up. Right, so these are the wing nuts or wing bolts that I'm going to be using to attach the solar panel. And the reason I chose these is so that I can undo it and manoeuvre it as of when I need to and there's a reason they're this long I'll come to that in a minute let's just check these line up yep there you go 
So there you are, there, there's the holes drilled in one piece of aluminium angle. I do need to measure and get the centre point, so I need to drill a hole in the centre as well, but I'm not going to do that up here. I'm going to take this bit of aluminium angle down onto the floor and copy where these holes are into another piece of aluminium angle and then measure the distance and make another hole in the middle and then put another riv nut in the solar panel so I'll have three of these holding the solar panel in place and also that centre riv nut in the solar panel is going to be what my arm is going to attach to when I raise the solar panel at an angle hopefully facing the sun what's on top of my head? I look like a Teletubby <laughs> So this is our piece of angle that I'm going to replicate what the holes in this by putting them back to back like that, lining them up and then use that as a template for the other one. Really simple but a lot easier than it was when I was up in the roof that's for sure. <laughs> so now I'm going to put a bolt through there and then drill the hole the other side. And this is purely to make sure they don't move. I want to measure between there and there and make a hole in the middle. So that's our two pieces of angle done with three holes in, completely mirror in each other. <laughs> so they're the holes that our solar panel is going to be fixed to these. So now we've got to do is fix these to the roof. So now I've got the solar panel attached at both ends, I've got my centre hole already drilled in my piece of angle. I can now go ahead and drill the hole for the centra, centra, <laughs> for the central riv nut, which is what I'm going to do now. There you go. We're using the angle as a template. My drill's going flat. Now we change drill bits. Put the bigger drill bit in the hole in the drill. And I'm rushing now because <laughs> I really don't like the look of the cloud. It's bloody typical. So now I've changed the drill bit. I'm going to disconnect our template, commonly known as a piece of angle. And then drill the hole there for the rift nut. I might as well take it off that end as well and make it easy on myself. Oh dear. So. Oh, there's another one. There, about there. Right, so we lay that down over there. We don't need that for the moment. That's where our middle and the nut's going to go. Simple, isn't it, really? <laughs> yep, like that. Well, it was uh, a I'm really not a fan of this thing. Yeah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I think what would make it easy if I put some copper slip on this make it easier to undo anyway there's our centre and it's starting to spit and I've got to do the other side yet and I've also got to drill the holes in the angle to fix it to the roof I'm going to put the camera away because it's starting to rain <laughs> I'll be back in a minute and I'll show you the finished article well this is the very next Day. it did actually start to rain so I quickly finished it off in the rain couldn't film it but nevertheless here we go this is what it looks like so we've got our panel up higher now and above the skylight I've got this cross member fixed to the side here this is just where it's in its where it's going to be stored so this is the arm that's going to support the panel once it's raised so the idea is I undo these wing nuts here 
the panel will go that way. I undo the wing nut on the other side of the arm, that goes that way, reconnects to the panel in the middle, and then it'll be facing the sun, hopefully. Now, as luck would have it, the sun has actually come out, so we can see how much power has been generated by this 300 watt solar panel. Well, actually, it's 305. So I'm getting 54 watts right now, laying flat on the roof. So let's tip it up and we'll see how much difference it actually makes. Well, there you go, look at that. That's what it ended up looking like. It's fantastic, it tips absolutely perfect. I'm really, really, really surprised how far up that goes. Maybe it could do with be, these being a little bit shorter, but um, if I want it to slant more like down more, all I've got to do is move it from there up to the top one up there. If I do that, it won't be at such sharp angle. But here's the important thing. I'm now getting, I remember it's winter, getting 95 watts now. Well, it was. <laughs> the clouds just come over. It's down to 50 again. But that's all right because I'm, I just know this is going to increase my chances of getting more solar power to my power pack in my van. And the bonus is, like I said earlier, I've got all this extra space now on the roof of my van so I can actually fit another solar panel up here if I want to. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't choose to use power actuators like a lot of people do. Well, the reason I didn't use power actuators to lift the pa panel mechanically is because now the way I've done this I can actually tilt this solar panel that way or that way depending on where I'm parked. So I've got the option and that is what really appeals to me and that's why I did it like this. Now for those of you that are interested in replicating this tilting solar panel, for your convenience I will leave a link in the description of this video to where I brought all of these various components to make this setup work. And if you enjoyed this video then please do give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, ta for now.